barking or lunging at strangers, leash reactivity towards other dogs, or you're just not feeling comfortable taking your dog outdoors, then the Rowdy Rover group class is just for you. I'm Yori Medeiros. I'm a certified dog trainer and I'm the owner and founder of the Canine Learning Academy. Hi, I'm Julie Priman and I'm proud to be a Karen Pryor Academy certified training partner and a sea baddy. So the purpose of this video is to outline what is to come in our Rowdy Rover group class. The Rowdy Rover class is designed to help you manage and train dogs that have overreactive behavior. So dogs tend to overreact for several different reasons. In this class, we're going to put them into three different categories just for class purposes to make things a little easier. We have dogs that overreact because of fear. Some, like Julie's dog, might just be a little bit too excited when they see somebody that they know, so overexcitement. Um, and the third reason we call kind of mixed signals. So a dog that is just not quite sure and they tend to overreact because they lack the skills that it takes to understand. So for the purposes of this class, we'll be defining overreactive as behavior that's above what a, a dog savvy person would consider socially appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, during the class, we're going to basically break it down into teaching you four parts of FAT, behavior adjustment training. We're gonna talk about the leash skills, you know, why and how to use them. We're gonna give you some really good examples so that you can practice your leash skills before you even show up for the first day of class. Second, we're gonna to talk to you and you're gonna learn a lot about body, body language. language. You wanna say anything about body language? It's a great communication tool when you know what your, body, your dog's body is saying to you, even if they can't verbally tell you what they need in that moment. Yeah. Besides, leash skills, and body language. The third thing that you'll learn in this group class is gradual prompts. How to get your dog to disengage with the trigger. And lastly, and my favorite, is this your favorite? Mark and Move. Mark and Move is a great tool that you're gonna be able to use in the real world, not just out here in our group class. This is something that you're gonna bring back if you live in the city or in a high rise building, Mark and Move is going to be your lifesaver. So all of these are brand new tools that we're bringing to you to really enhance the training that your dog already has or just provide better communication and bonding between owner and dog in very stressful situations. Great. So after you watch this online video, we're going to set up a consultation with you over the phone. We like to use the platform Zoom so that we can see your face and maybe share the screen and kind of give you some information. What we need from you is we need to know what your triggers, your dog's triggers, not yours, your dog's triggers are and what the distance of that trigger. So is it 50 feet? Is it 100 feet? And what does that look like? My dog lunges when he sees a small white dog 50 feet away coming towards me staring. That's pretty descriptive, right? Very descriptive. So what we want to be careful and mindful of during this class is labeling our yes. dogs. Talking about friendly, aggressive, or even my dog is sad today. So instead of describing what their emotions or what they may be feeling, Let's start thinking about our dog as the whole dog, describing them with their ears and their mouth, their tails and their body. The more details we have in each situation, the better we can make a training plan for you and your dog to succeed out in the real world. So before we talk about leash skills, um, tell me or what are some descriptive ways to describe your dog's behavior? So um, let's talk about the tail and the ears a little bit. So that may be your dog's ears are sticking straight up, but they're both pointed forward. That may mean something completely different than my dog's ears are sticking straight up and one of them's back, right? 
So we need to know those small details. My dog's tail is all the way up and it's very stiff. Or my dog's tail is up, but he's wagging just a little bit. Those two things may mean I'm very, very alert or I'm processing the information. Right, right, right. So right. every behavior happens in context. So we need to know what it looks like when it happens and at what distance and the specifics of that other dog or that other person. Are they on leash? Are they walking towards us? That's good information. All of that's yeah. very important. So the nice thing about this class is that we can actually measure your dog's progress from paper to video to real life processes your dog making different choices shows up in the numbers. Yeah. Whether that's the distance of 50 feet versus 30 feet, or my dog barked for an hour versus- Or nonstop, my and dog now- My dog barked for two minutes, and then we were able to walk away, or even 30 seconds, right? right? So all of that information is quantifiable and shows a real progress. Yes. One other thing that we want to address that you're going to learn in this class is the different zones. And um, Julie, I'll have you talk about the different bat zones. And we're going to give you so much, <laughs> so many things to download to help process and understand this. Because right. if you understand why and then you know how, you're going to be more likely to be successful. And you're going to use this tool. So tell me a little about, about the different bat zones. Just be brief, because we're gonna specifically try to hang out in the first two bat zones. Okay, so just to go over it broadly, if we're thinking about our dog's stress as a beach, if the dog's feet are on land and they're dry, they're probably able to think a little more clearly, process information, but have a little bit of freedom in that choice. Right. If our dog's feet are starting to get wet, or even if they go all the way into the deep end, what we'd call a red zone, they're over their head and you can see that on the chart and you can see it in real life. They're over their head, they're drowning, they're stressed, and they need help in that situation, right? We all need a lifesaver sometimes. Yes. And that's what this class is gonna show you how to do before your dog jumps into the deep end. We're gonna keep our dog's feet dry okay. and work on changing their behavior in a positive way without too much interference. So the purpose of this class, you will be training in the first two zones. We call this the green and the blue zone. Um, specifically, just give us like four um, bullet points about the green and maybe four bullet points about the blue zone. Okay. And then we'll talk a little bit later about threshold. Okay. So the green zone, right? You're in your backyard and your dog's wandering around and they see something off in the distance and they kind of gaze and then they look back away. So it's engagement, but not focus or staring. Okay. Yeah. So your dog's body language is going to look really loose. Soft and loose. It's going to yeah. be wiggly. It's going <laughs> to have a, a C shape. We're going to see a little more relax in the muscles. And the ears? Most likely a little Probably floppy. flowing. It depends on your floppy. dog's breed. All ears are a little bit different, but you're going to notice less tension and less wrinkles. Um, so if we're moving on into the blue zone, our dog is definitely focusing on triggers, maybe a squirrel or a cat or that dog across the street, but it only takes minimal effort for them to look and then maybe disengage after two or three seconds on their own. So they don't need help necessarily. Oh, good. They're just looking at it and able to disengage and go back to what they were doing. And if disengage is a new word to you, for us in the purpose of this class, it just means when they're looking at a trigger and then they decide to stop looking. So the moment that they stop staring and perhaps they look at you, perhaps they go back to sniffing, but they're not, uh, they feel a little safe or they're just ready to stop staring. <laughs> yeah, they're able to look away on their own without yeah. too much human interference. Great. All right, so breaking down leash skills. I'm going to have Julie demonstrate and I'm going to talk you through this and we've got lots of video to send you in slow motion. I want you to pay attention here. We're going to talk about tag points to help you remember our leash skills. Okay. So tag point number one is the handle. So tag point one, handle. And you're gonna place the handle, I like to hold the leather strap 
place the handle through your hand that you're going to be holding the leash with. If you are right hand dominant, it's going to be over your right hand. Handle, you're gonna place your hand through the handle and you're going to turn your hand so that your palm is facing yourself. Go ahead and keep your hand up. Good. Next, after handle is tag point number two. We call this part right here the thumb pin. So if you're holding the leather strap with your non-dominant hand, the non-handle hand, you're going to use that leather strap and then place it through or around what we call the thumb pit. So tag point number two, thumb pit. Good. Now, tag point number three is called the breaking distance. And to do that, we're going to use the non-handle hand, your breaking distance hand, in this case, this is Julie's left hand, she's going to pretend she's serving a few drinks and using her breaking distance hand, she's going to slide the leash approximately two to three feet. This is the breaking distance um, of holding your leash. So tag point number three is breaking distance you should see about two to three feet. Tag point number four is to take a deep breath and let your arms drop. Tag point number four is breathe. And here you should see a natural smiley face. It should be slightly above your knees depending on how tall or short you are. Tag point number five has to do with making the leash shorter. We are using here a 15 foot leash. So when it's time to shorten the leash, we gather the leash. It's a vocabulary word that you're going to hear. So tag point number, is this five? Five. So tag point number five, you're going to scoop. Now this breaking hand stays put. The handle is the hand that can move. To do the scoop, you're going to bring your fingers towards your belly button and then scoop underneath and slide back into your breaking distance. Do you see that the leash has gotten shorter? So belly button and slide. So tag point number five is scoop. Tag point number six is clap. Again, breaking distance hand stays still. Your handle is the one that's going to move and you're going to clap your hands together. At that time, you're going to grab the leash and slide again. And so you're going to repeat the scoop and slide and clap. And go ahead and keep repeating until the leash is all the way in the right hand. There we go. The last tag point that we use is called bunny ears. If you've done this correctly, you should have bunny ears instead of a big circle. So we're going to repeat this in slow motion in a slow motion video. And why do we say this hand should stay still? We want to make sure that this hand is doing all of the work so that you're not inadvertently pulling back and forth on your dog or causing unnecessary vibration on the leash to distract or influence your dog's decisions. This is the hand that is closest to your dog. So this leash right here, if we can keep this pretty still, it's going to make your dog feel as almost as if they're off, off leash. leash. Yeah, which is the whole focus of this to help your dog make better decisions without so much human interference, we need to give them the impression that they're off leash and they have that freedom to make the decision. All right, so shortening the leash, just like Yo did, the bunny ears. We're gonna end up with this nice bunny ear shape so that should our dog keep moving, keep moving, do you see how nicely that just glides out of Yo's hands? As a dog, I'm not feeling any extra loops or pulls or, or snags in that situation because it's just a continually flowing process. Nice. All right. Check out this slow motion video that's going to show you step by step the important leash skills we'll be using in this class. Go ahead and grab your leash at home and practice by hooking it to a fence or a chair and walking backwards then practice gathering forwards. The number one thing I want you to remember, keep that breaking distance arm still while you're practicing. Do it until your mechanics are so easy, you don't even have to look at your hands. 
That's going to make you much more successful in areas where you need to pay attention to your dog. During our first Zoom conference, our online Zoom, we will be asking you to demonstrate these leash skills before the first class. So do your homework. So we're using the Freedom No Pull Harness. It's from Two Hounds. Um, to help get your dog to feel comfortable putting something over their head, we recommend giving them food first and then sliding it over their head. You'll see that there's a strap that goes underneath their belly and clips in on both sides of their shoulders. 